so far, we've had Bianca and Sean talking really, and this may be unfair, about the present, in Bianca's case, in, in quite detail, the micro present, and the future in Sean's case, which is really quite inspirational. Where I'm here is to talk about how the Better Health Channel story fits into that. Our past, where we're at right now, and where we see the future going. Um, the big news story is that we're not investing in vacuum technology, Sean. So um, you're safe on that respect. Um, so what is the Better Health Channel? Stupid question, potentially. One, it's a website, that's obvious, but it's also apps, it's social media, it's videos, it's recipes, it's healthy lifestyle information, it's a gateway to health services, it's quality assured information about um, conditions and about treatments. But it's not just that, it's a team of about 30 people who I'm really happy to lead. Most of them are wearing white t-shirts in the room today. Um, but it's also an ecosystem of 200 content partners who have been with us since day dot, a lot of the time, who've really made this thing work. Um, and they've all contributed to a vision that really inspires us. And that vision is of the Better Health ch Channel, empowering Victorians to actively manage their health and the health of those that they care for. Now, when we started, that was a really inspirational statement, and it still is. It still powers the work that we do. And I would imagine it also inspires the work that you do as communicators and as medical professionals or whatever the work that you do. Um, and it continues to uh, inspire us now. So let's talk a little bit about our story. OK, so this is our story on one slide. Easy. Um, so if you cast yourself, your eyes right to the left, you'll see the word 1999. Um, that is not a typo. So I can see a couple of millenn millennials in the audience. So I'm going to need to explain this concept to you. So there was a time um, before Snapchat, right? And then before that time was Facebook, and there was a time before that too. And that was called uh, MySpace. Um, and before then, there was a time it was called Friendster. And before then we started, believe it or not. Um, and when we started, it was really quite um, what we'd probably call these days a disruptive idea. Let's go out, let's put in health information online that people can actually understand and that actively change the balance of power between uh, a health consumer and a GP. It's, it's quite fundamentally disruptive. Um, and it was a success. So. Um, it's one of the few initiatives from 1999 that government did that I think still exist. Um, along the way, um, we somehow managed to acquire a tram. Um, we lost that, that was okay. Um, uh, we acquired mobile apps, um, we acquired um, social media, we acquired a lot of things. Probably the most thing we acquired, the most important thing was an audience. And that's grown with us pretty steadily, sometimes dramatically. And it's got to the point that we now have around 50 million visits a year. Um, just to our website too. Um, so it's been a success for us. Um, most of those people are Australian, although there are significant numbers of people who come from overseas as well. Um, I love those numbers. It's help, it helps to um, do business cases a lot of the time. Um, but the numbers are just numbers. Behind them are people. And there are people who are in quite a critical moment in their life when they're um, not just sticking crayons up their nose, but um, diagnosed with cancer or, or worrying about um, putting their parents into aged care or a child that's diagnosed with um, ADHD, all these sort of stories. These are people that are coming to our site and we are playing a role in their health experience. And that's really um, profound and inspiring for us. And we want to continue to do that. So that's our past. Um, and that's been pretty good, but where are we going? Now, um, we can't stay still. Um, we don't intend to. So there are a few things that um, can be framed either as threats or opportunities to us, um, which is to look at it as opportunities. So I'll talk through some of those. Um, the first one that uh, I think Bianca talked about um, really well is mobile, and that's a really having a profound impact and has already for us. We've gone from 10 to 20 to 30 percent mobile to upwards of 60 quite regularly now um, and that's what you would expect um, and that has some impacts on us in terms of the way we design our sites the way we write the content our thinking around um, page loads i think bianca talked about um, but it's got some really profound implications on how we can actually 
get in people's decision making process and how we can influence them to do um, positive decisions about their health. Um, when we say integration, when I say integration, I mean this idea of the offline and the offline online worlds integrating and merging and becoming one. Um, this is um, a potential impact on the way we do business and a lot of opportunity there. Where we talk about um, tailored information, I think this is something that increasingly everyone expects. When I go to a website, for better or worse, it is my experience. Or when I go to an app, it's my experience and it's different to your experience and it's different to your experience. Uh, and that's the way we expect it to happen. That creates lots of challenges to make that happen. Um, but also a lot of opportunities. Um, what motivates me to take a positive health decision is quite different to you, potentially. So we see that as a massive opportunity to um, provide information that's a lot more useful, uh, contextually relevant and personally relevant, and more persuasive. Um, complexity. So this is more around the health space in general. So um, we do have an aging population. Um, we have increase in chronic disease. We have a um, complex governance structure between our federal um, federated system of government, which makes the health space very complex. Um, that's really difficult then to provide personal information in a very complex and rapidly changing world. But frame it the other way, it's a massive opportunity for us to be the voice that makes sense of that for people who are confused. And the last, obviously, is a thing that is probably nothing new, but um, health um, in general, and it's very publicly discussed at the moment in the news, um, is not necessarily funded to the level we think it should be. Um, and this is, you can see, flow on impacts into the news now about um, GST and a whole bunch of things as solutions for that. But digital has a potential, and so does the Better Health Channel, to play a part in allowing the health system to run smoother and um, far more efficiently. So. Um, getting back to our, our vision of um, uh, enabling Victorians to better manage their health, all of these opportunities mean that vision is far more tangible than it was in 1999 when we were just a website. We can far easily reach out and actually support people in the choices that they make. Okay, so um, you will have noticed that the, the Better Health Channel is actually new now. Um, some things have changed, but I want to talk through a little bit about what we've done. So over the last year, probably two, maybe even longer, um, we've been working hard, um, largely behind the scenes to transform what we've done. So uh, really at a foundational level. So that's been technology, um, a lot of technology work, uh, lots of new content, um, lots of new functionality um, and a new design. Um, and we think that the work we've done over the last few years has set us up really well for, to meet the challenges in the short to medium term in particular. So I want to talk through some of those. So the first thing that you would have seen, and you can see on your phone now if you like, um, and you would have seen a couple of months ago is a new design, um, and it's fully mobile optimised. In fact, in some respects it works better on a mobile than it does on a desktop because that's what it's intended to do. That was really important for us because we need to capture people in the micro moments, and that's overwhelmingly on a phone. Um, it does complement our um, native apps um, to make sure Victorians get quality information at their time of need, no matter where they are. Um, we're also, as an aside, expanding the range of apps that we have. So uh, there's one that we launched a couple of weeks ago, which is called Vax on Time, which is a reminder app for parents with kids under the age of five. Um, the second thing which uh, we're working on as a real priority is what we're calling navigating the health system. So um, I think Bianca and Sean both talked about their interactions with the health system. I think Bianca's comment about um, a friend who was diagnosed with breast cancer and her experience of trying to understand the choices for her, that's very, very common. Um, I've had experiences like that and probably most of you have too. And most of you are probably far more literate in the ways of the health system than the average people are. When we talk to our users, that comes up again and again and again. It's confusing, it's hard, it's complex. I don't understand the choices I potentially need to make and what the impacts of them are. So we have put a lot of effort into creating a lot of new content, um, videos, pathfinders, interactive tools um, that we're calling navigating the health system. Um, it's, it's in process and we're hoping that within the next few months you'll see this 
online. Um, and this will be one of the more significant pieces of work that we've done in recent years. It's branching out from just talking about your personal health to what the health system means. Um, that leads on to personalization and tailored experiences. So I've talked about that a couple of times and others have as well. Um, the platform that we built makes it possible for us to start to deliver those tailored experiences a lot faster, a lot more easily than we would have done before. We're working through that and we've been careful because we need to be very careful about issues of privacy. Um, um, but we see that as a massive opportunity, as I've said before. Um, our health is really partly influenced by where we live, um, by who our relationships are like, by any number of factors, by our attitudes. Um, we're able to collect a lot of data in, in various different ways and make intelligent uses of it. And at one intelligent use of that is to provide really tailored experiences of the Better Health Channel based on things like your age, your gender, your location, or any other information that is potentially um, shared with us. So we're really working through that. And that's something that we'd be interested in talking to partners about um, if they have a need for that as well. Um, and the last one is around health management. Traditionally, we've been a very successful uh, library of health information um, over 16, 17 years. Um, but we're developing a lot and changing, as we need to be, to be a true engagement and behaviour change platform. And part of that is a platform where users can log into, and we're tentatively calling this My Health Life. Um, so users can log in and um, enrol in behaviour change projects programs, excuse me, use specific tools as they move along the health journey and engage with communities of like-minded people. Um, that's something we're working on now as well. Um, so the launch of the new look, which um, we happen to like, um, is just really the first step of our transformational journey. Uh, and it's a journey that we're working on really hard this year and will continue to um, over the coming years. And we're hoping that you can contribute to them. So um, how do you do that? The Better Health Channel is really only made possible by our partners. So I think Sean said, talked about the ecosystem. Um, some very fast seeing, seeing people back in the late 90s um, constructed a model where the site worked in partnership. Um, it's only possible that we can do that. So we have pa partners who've worked with us for years and years and years. And without them, we wouldn't have been able to create over 2,000 fact sheets and articles. Um, we're really keen to look at ways that we can deepen and extend that relationship. Um, so why would you potentially do that, apart from the goodness of your heart? Um, one, um, we do have access to an audience. Um, we can um, maximise the reach of your audience, potentially, and we're keen to work with you to do that. Um, we have an average of upwards, well, towards 200,000 visits to the site every day, um, 75,000 social and media followers, and we're able to get key health messages out to the community um, at scale. Um, so some of you in this uh, room may not be able to do that. Um, we can help. Um, we can target these messages to specific uh, cohorts, and that's useful too. And we can track them and measure them, and that's come up as a theme a couple of times today. Um, and we have a wealth of content that we've developed, so we can surround your messages with a lot of quality assured tools, fact sheets, recipes, anything you need, make a really coherent, rich experience um, for, you, for your messaging. So consider us a key platform in your behavior change, health promotion and communication toolkits. Um, you can help review content, um, you can help social media personalization, you can contribute to our work in My Health Life. Um, but this is just a start of a conversation. I'm keen to hear, or we're keen to hear from you, how you think you might like to do that as well. Um, and we're open to more conversations, however you need to do that. Um, so thank you. That's our vision so far. It's a story that we've had from uh, 1999 to 2016. Um, and thank you everyone in this room and, and elsewhere who've played a part in that story. Um, the future for us we think is really bright and inspirational and new. Um, and I thank you in advance for the role that you're going to play in our story to go. Thank you.